Hello everyone and welcome back for another video. Uh, in this one I'm going to be looking at uh, LCD screens and this is really kind of part of my growth clock series that I'm doing a bigger project although this is not uh, about the growth clock itself it's about the LCD screen and what do you do when uh, you've, you've got an LCD screen that you've got no data sheet for and no pinouts. Uh, so when I get to the growth clock it'll have um, you know I'll have to work out what all the segments are. And I thought I'd experiment or show at least on this one, which is a bit easier to work with because it's got nice pins on it and I can I can plug it in. Now, um, static LCD screens have a pin per segment. And so what will happen is that these segments are divided up into groups and each group has a common. So you'd multiplex the, the display um, in order to access all the individual uh, segments that you need. Now, usually, a LCD would have between one and four, maybe eight uh, groups or segments or commons. Generally, they're to the right hand of the of the uh, pins that come out. So if we take this, there's a little glass bump on this side, which will often indicate the left hand side. And so your pins will go from here, one from one, uh, in this case, to 11 and 12 to 22. So. You know, I don't have the data sheet, so I don't know for certain which way this will be, but I'm going to make an assumption that the uh, little glass bump should be on the left-hand side, and that should be pin 1. And in general, um, I'm hoping the com pins will be across here, uh, perhaps the last two on this side and the last two on that side, uh, but they could be anywhere around here. Now, in order to do this, what I'm going to do is uh, literally test the pins in a different, in, you know, I'm going to be putting current against the pins to see uh, what comes up and from that we can work out what the uh, what, what the um, pin configuration is. Now static LCDs are usually or always driven with AC current and if you don't drive them with AC current you can apparently just uh, damage the LCD. Um, this is to do with the polarization of the of the uh, liquid crystal displays. I'm sure there's a whole science around that but I don't know enough about it to talk about it now. There is a nice video that Dave Jones does about driving LCD screens, and um, so have a look at that because that's a really good, uh, a, a really good explanation of of, um, of an LCD driver or how you drive, or how and why you drive LCDs with AC. Right. So what I'm going to use to test this is a function generator. Uh, I've got it set to 100 hertz, which is um, quite on the higher end of the frequency to drive it. Uh, usually somewhere between 30, 20, 30 hertz to 60, 80, 100 hertz. Uh, if it's too low, it's going to flicker. If it's too high, uh, I believe it will draw too much current. Uh, so I'll set this to 100 hertz, and I'm using the normal output, the 50 ohm output. This is so that I can adjust the amount of voltage coming out. Now, this is set at a normal voltage uh, around 3, 3.5 volts for this LCD. Uh, but it just gives me nice, some nice control over it and it'll drive the LCD better and less chance of risk or damage. So that's what I'm using, it's all set up. So if I head back down to here. Um, right, so I've got the LCD set up over here. I've just got it between the two boards uh, across here. That's just so that I can orientate it in its normal manner. Otherwise, ah, I've got to change this board. Anyway, it doesn't matter, it's easier like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a play to start off with to see what starts to make sense. Now, um, I would imagine I'm going to start at this pin over here and put something on the end there and start in pin one. And first thing I come up there is set, which sounds good. And if I start moving this pin out, I get another segment up. That's probably good. Get another segment up. That looks good. Another segment up, that looks good as well. Yeah, nothing, 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 nothing. So it's likely that that pin, which is what I would have expected, is a segment or it is a common pin. Um, and that one's probably a common pin. If I go to the top, so potentially the other, oh, it's so sensitive to, to the static in my fingers. If we go over here to that pin, there's nothing coming out there. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, there was something. Nope. Nothing, 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 nothing. So probably no commons up there if we 
go down here just see I mean we're getting we're getting something that's coming up here this is a bit of static that's still in the circuit you can see it fades um, there's a single element maybe there's a single element there's a single element and there's a single element so that again goes to show that these these ones down here are the common so what I suspect is that instead of having the last two common on this side and the last two common on this side the four the last four pins here are, are common. Uh, so it's going to one and just move this to the other side. Uh, so we're getting temp out here. This LCD, by the way, is from an old soldering station. Uh, so hence the temp and, and various different things on here. Uh, so there's a segment. There's a segment. You see, it's quite good if you come. I expect to see, if I'm on a common, if this one here is a common, then I expect to see one segment coming up at a time. Uh, heat on. What was that? Was that heat on? There was heat on. Okay, so I'm happy that the four over here, so what is that? So there's 11 across here, so that's 8, 9, 10, 11. The last four pins on this side are the LCD uh commons so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to start shorting what i think are all the segments together and shorting all the commons together because that way i can get the whole display to come up uh, and when i've got the whole display to come up i can see exactly what's on there uh, and then i can start mapping that out so uh, just put this into fast motion while i do this Just as well, I fast forwarded through that, otherwise I think you would have lost interest and headed off somewhere else. So what I'm going to do now, so what I've done is um, I've shorted all uh, pins 1 to 7 through here and 8 through 11 through there. And all the pins across there, uh, 12 through 22. So that way um, I should be able to, when I connect this up, I should see all the all the uh, the entire display coming up. Just move that underneath. Uh, so there you go. There's the the entire display. If I pull that out a bit more, and I I did do this a little bit earlier. I started to map out the uh, the the elements. So I drew it out there. Um, I think I drew a couple of different pictures. That was a slightly better picture for me. Numbering digit one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. Then symbol one, symbol two, uh, three, four, five, six, and the degree sign seven and eight. So once I got all that, I went through a, a fairly painful process, which I, I won't take you through. Uh, literally starting on COM one and pin one, and mapping out every single segment, uh, which segments come up on which which port, at least on, on which um, com. And that maps out into a table like that. So now when I'm, it, well, if I was gonna put this into a project, which I might at some point, uh, I've got all the pins coming up here with the com pins down here. And I can see that if I want D uh, element E, so D5, E, which is that segment, that segment there, that is display five segment E. Then I would use COM1 and pin three and that would light that one. So I can then multiplex through these or multiplex through those, whichever way you want to do it. So I can cycle through those and set, well, I would cycle through these uh, and set the pins to get the particular uh, display segments that I want and that would make up the display. And as long as I'm doing that as a high, at a high enough frequency, uh, the naked eye will not see any flicker in that. So you can either do this through your own circuitry uh, or you can get chips that will that are LCD drivers or you can use a processor that has got an LCD driver built into it. And, and uh, I know Atmel has got a couple that do that, ST got a couple that do that. Um, the chip, the Elan chip that's on the, and that's in the clock, uh, grow clock has got, uh, it's got one of those. So a lot of, mic a lot of uh, microprocessors will have them built in. And it's quite useful to have it built in on the microprocessor because that saves a lot of space, um, especially if you don't have a lot of other I.O. If there's not a lot of other buttons and, and features that you need to put in, largely your, your um, 
using your LCD display, then it's a good route to go. So I hope that gives you an idea of uh, how to test it and how to test an LCD safely without, without blowing it up. So if you, if you haven't got a, a signal generator to, to drive it with AC, um, you can use a multimeter, set it to your, your diode tester, uh, and then you can get the pins that come out. You can get, oh, this is all shorted, so this is all going to come out simultaneously. Um, you can see the numbers that are coming out there. Actually, you can see there, you see how it starts to fade. And this is why... Yeah, there it is fading again. This is why you drive static LCDs with an AC current. And certainly from a testing point of view, it makes it easier. Uh, if you are doing that with, with a multimeter, keep swapping it around. So at least you change the polarity. You'll get a nice strong, uh, you get nice strong digits that come out. Uh, and if that starts to fade or go funny, then just swap your, your leads around. Well, I hope you found that informative and interesting. And if you did, please click like. And of course, click the subscribe if you haven't already done so, so that you get uh, notifications of all future videos coming up. And uh, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.